Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Uh, we're going to continue with the SHA hash calculator today. Um, first thing we need to do is add a routine that adds two 32-bit values. That was the only thing that we didn't need. We didn't do already because we didn't need it for any of these functions right here, but we're going to need it when we get down to these computations. So uh, let's see what we got here. It'll be similar to like anding two values. So I'm going to copy that. But we're going to add them. And we're just going to we're going to work it the same way. The zero page address of the first value will be an X, the address of the second value will be an A. And so all this can work the same except this becomes an add with carry and we need to stick uh, need to stick a clear carry up here so that it's going to start and it's going to start with the, the fourth byte because this is all um, big endian so we need to start with the byte on the right since we want to care we want the carry to carry over byte after byte we didn't need that with the boolean functions like um, f and but this time we will um, so what this will do, it'll clear the carry, then with X at three, it'll load in the first or load in byte three, which is the fourth byte, add with carry to the other one, because we're we're sticking our indexes in up here, the same way we did before. Um, and so yeah, that, that should still match up. That's here plus one, here plus or see, here plus one, here plus three, here plus five. So um, add with carry and then store it back. All right. So let's copy. First of all, let's copy this up to the top. Um, I guess I put that right here. All right. So we've got our got our documentation for all our functions up here at the top. All right. So. In our main program, then we want to test that. So let's see. We've got looks like we put. Th I don't remember what I was doing up here. Let's get this out of the way. I don't remember what we were testing last time, but it doesn't matter. Um, so right here we put 3 into VA and 7 into VB and C into VC. So let's put, or let's load X with um, VA and load A with VB because because we passed the zero page address of the first value in X and the second value in A so this should add um, should add 3 and 7 and leave the, the answer which will be A we'll leave that back in VA Let's try that. Okay. Um, all right. Need to see where where these things are. Where does where does A start? I forget. Okay. So VA is eighteen. VB is one C and zero page. Okay, so it looks like it worked. It would have put the 3 here, then added the 7 to it, and put the answer here. So this is this was the one X was pointing to, this was the one A was pointing to. 
Now that doesn't tell us whether it carried correctly, so we need to do another test to make sure it carries correctly. Um, so let's make VA FF, or let's see, let's make VB FF. So FF plus 3 should carry over and make the next byte 1 and leave the last byte as 2. So we should end up with 0102 at the end. That should be correct. And there we are, there's our 0102. All right, so now we have a routine that can add two numbers. And by the way, um, way back at the beginning in our org file, we said um, addition is modulo 2 to the 32nd, meaning if the, four, if the last byte, if the high byte on the left carries, we just discard that. We don't care about that. So that's fine. All right, so we have our add routine. Now we're going to get started. Now that we have that, we can get started on all this business down here. We have our functions like F4 and F3 and F2, F1, FCH, Fmag. So we have all those functions, so a lot of this then is just adding things together. Doing the functions and adding things together. Now we need to decide where the message schedule is going to be. I think at least for now, we'll put it at C100. It may not be, we may not want to leave it there when we get done, but the message schedule takes 256 bytes, as we say up here. Um, the spec talks about it in words, words of four bytes, but we, you know, that means 256 bytes. So we'll stick that at C100. Um, now, we don't have we don't have a file to work on yet because we haven't written the you know we haven't written the the outer part to allow us to load in a file so we'll just have to assume let's see for now we just need to get we need to get data from somewhere it doesn't really matter where um, we can get from D100 or B100 or, um, or even the zero page space. But basically, we have to be able to we have to be able to pull in data 64 bytes at a time. Um, let's see, what do we have at 2000? I don't know exactly how far our program is going yet. Um, let's see. Oh, it's going up to 15A5. Okay. Let's say that our let's say that our incoming data is going to be at 2,000. It won't necessarily, but let's just say that's our location to begin with. Um, So what we're going to do then is to prepare the message schedule, we'll copy 64 bytes from here, from M, or 64 bytes of M, which starts at 2000, into the first 64 bytes of the message schedule area at C100. And then we do this business to, to fill out the rest of C100. Okay. So, we're going to want a pointer for M. We're going to want a pointer that tells us where we are currently in M because we're going to be stepping through that 64 bytes at a time. Um, okay. So let's go over here. M pointer. Seems like a good name for it. That's going to be a two-byte um, 
pointer to current location in M. M is just the message, which by message they just mean the, the chunk of data that we're working on. Typically we're going to be talking about file, but it can be any chunk of data. It could be something somebody just typed in. It doesn't have to be a file off the disk, but in our case it probably will be. Um, okay, so M pointer will be the pointer to that location. Alright. And so the first thing we do is copy 64 bytes from M pointer from the location pointed to by M pointer, which we'll have to set up at the beginning, to the message schedule location, okay, which we said is C100, so we need to set that up too. So um, let's call this, actually, let's call this message P for pointer. And let's call this www, www, WWP because uh, for whatever reason I decided, well I remember why the reason, um, in the spec they call the message schedule W, capital W, I don't know why why it's a W, but um, I decided to call it WW just because a single letter doesn't stand out very well. Um, so we'll call that pointer to... Um, pointer into message schedule. All right. We need to set those two up at the beginning. So let's come back to our code. And let's do an init section. I wonder why that is there. shouldn't be there. Anyway. So in our init section we need to set up those two values. So it's load A with zero. Store that into um, the low byte of message P and WWP and then load A with 20 store that into a high byte of message P and then load A with C and store that into the high byte of the WW pointer. Alright. And in the zone. Alright, so That'll just set up those two pointers for us so that they're ready to use. Um, now I want to probably let's see. Probably want to do this as a subroutine, you know, as as a as a separate routine and not we definitely don't want all this in the in the um, what would you call it in in the main section. So Let's call. Let's have a routine that we call. Let's basically break this up into four sections. This this thing. We have four sections here. Prepare the message schedule, init a a through h loop, and then add. So let's break this up into four sections. So we'll call this. Um, we'll call this one, prep ww. And it's going to do this, so let's copy this. And we'll make that. Oops. Ah, don't do that. I hate it when it does that. It tries to be a little too helpful. You have to outsmart the, the mode to keep it from... Okay, so we're writing a routine here. We're going to call it prep www and prep www. First thing it needs to do is copy 64 bytes from message P to 
WWP. And that's simple enough because we already have a routine for copying bytes. Let's check it out. It's called FCopy MM, copy a series of bytes from one main memory location to another. So to use that, all we have to do is put the source address into copy source, put the destination address into copy dest, and pass the number of bytes in X. I'm going to copy that to help out my memory. So we need to load from, we need to load the value. We don't want to load from, we want to load the value that's at um, message P, store it, let's see, message is the, that's the source, yeah. We want to store that at copy source, do the same thing again, except with the high bytes, and then load A from WWP, Store that into copy dest. Do the same thing again with the high bytes. That's probably something I could write a macro for and save a little time. But And then we want the number of bytes in X, which is going to be 64. So um, load X with 64. And then call F copy MM. Copy next 64 bytes of message into WW. All right. So that's the first step right here. We got that done. Now we need to do the, the hard part. That The first part was easy. Um, This part, we have to, we're going to be walking through the, um, we're going to be walking through the, the space, the WW space at C100, from C100 to CFFF, CFF, let's write that up here, CFF. So after this point, where so for instance right now we've we've copied in bytes 0 to 63 right so our next byte our next word that we want to fill in is a 64 so OC 64 which is um, 40 four in hex so we filled in right here. We filled in from 0C00 to 0C3F, and so now we're sitting at 0C40, and that's where we want. We then want to build the next word as a 0, 0C40, and we do that by doing this little this little thing. We'll put this on one line. Um, And what this means, when it says like WWT minus 2, that means the word in WW that is two words back from the current word we're working on. So if we're currently on, we're currently on um, byte 64, then T minus 2 is going to be eight bytes back from that because everything is words. And so you got to multiply everything by four because there's four bytes to a word. So if we're currently on 64, if t is at 64, then t minus 2 is the word that starts at 56. And t minus 7 is you know, back from there, whatever, whatever they're going to multiply out to. So what we have to figure out how to, how to do that or what the best way is to keep track of where these things are. Um, I think, and we're going to be using F4 and F3, and also F add. Those will be the three functions that we're using in the process of this. 
So let's look at those functions, f4, f3, and f add. Because I want to know if any of my registers are going to be unclobbered. Um, well, f4, let's see. If add does not clobber y, clobbers a and x, but doesn't touch y. All right. Let's come back here then. Let's look at f4. Okay, F4 clobbers Y, and I assume F3 does also. Okay, so we can't use any of the registers as a loop or index here without making sure we save them in between. Um, all right. All right, I think... I've been kind of kicking this around in the back of my head for basically since I started this project, how to handle this part of it, and I hadn't really settled on a way, which I guess is all right. That's kind of the point of this, is figuring things out as you go. Um, index into message schedule. Now this is not the same as the pointer. The pointer is pointing to a memory address. This is going to be just an index, meaning which byte are we working on within this space. Um, in other words, if we load this into X, we can use it as an index into, into the space. That's the idea I'm looking at here. Um, because let's say, let's say we load X with 40, because that's where we are now. And we store that into what I just call that WW index. Okay. Then we can get that back out of there after we've clobbered X off in, off in some routine. And what that means then is yeah. Okay, so then we can rewrite this up here. This is, this is what I've been tr kind of trying to get to in my head. We can rewrite this as WW comma X, meaning the, the start of WW indexed by X. And then this is going to be ww minus eight comma x meaning back up eight bytes from ww and then index by x this will be ww minus fifty six comma x this will be um, well four times fifteen is sixty so ww minus minus sixty comma x and ww minus 64 comma x I hope it makes sense what I'm what I'm doing here I think it'll hopefully be clearer when we get into the code but the idea is we're walking through this space four bytes at a time but each each location that we're working on in the space is moving along you know four bytes at a time with us and so if X is the thing we're walking through, if X is our index as we're walking through, then each of the other things we can point to where they are just by subtracting from from the beginning of the block. All right, so let's see how this is going to work. Um, what we're adding together here is four values. Two of them are just values that are previously in the block that we'll need to copy and, and add. And then two of them are the results of functions. So, let's see, let's see what F, remind, remind myself what um, F3 and F4 do. Oh yeah, that's right, they do the rotating business. So, come back up. All right, 
I think I'm starting to get it, get a handle on this. Um, so the first thing we want to do, let's just start. First thing we want to do is do F4 on this value, the value that is at wherever X currently indexes past, and that'll be past, um, yeah. I should put, I should put the P's in there because it's that's how it's gonna. Well, shoot, is that gonna work though? No, it's not. That's the problem. That's not gonna work. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Sorry, but I can't. Yeah, that's that's gonna be fine. Um, but we're not going to be able to how did I how did I even word that okay yeah this is not going to be the pointer in the message schedule this is just going to be um, an address let's use I think I've been using capital letters for addresses um, Beginning address of message schedule block. All right, that's what we want. And I think I don't have any other addresses set up yet. I guess. Okay. So to do F4 on a value, we have to copy that value to one of our temp locations. So the first thing we want to do is do the copy. So. So how do we copy? All right, we gotta look, but look at our routines again. Now we're copying. Oops, back up here. We're copying from main memory to main memory. Okay, so we still have our. So we're using this. Let me copy this here again to remind me how it works. So we want to copy. Copy from WW, let's see, what do I call it? No, from WW minus 8, comma X to temp 1. No, no. Well, no, wait a second. We aren't copying from one main memory location to another. That's right. We're copying from a main memory location to zero page. Okay. I knew this part was going to get stickier. So from main memory to zero page is right here. All right, get this out of the way. All right, so we have to put our source address, which is ww minus eight comma x, and that's where. Hmm. <laughs> See, our source address changes here. That's the thing. So to put it in copy source, we have to... We're going to have to actually add x to the value to the address. We're going to have to take www subtract 8 and add x. That seems like extra processing. Like a fair amount of extra processing actually to do this every time. Hmm. We almost have to do it though. I don't know. 
really see another good way to do it. Um, maybe it'll come to me, but um, these addresses keep moving, and you're dealing with four of them, well, five of them really, at a time. So I guess you could have five pointers. Hmm, maybe that's an idea. Have five pointers that move through the space together. that might be the thing to do. Let's pop over here. Okay, so... We could have five pointers pointing to the five things in this... in this... Uh, in this equation. The results and then the four things that go into it. We have five, five individual pointers pointing to those four things. And then and then each time we do a word, process a word, we'd have to add four to those five pointers. That's starting to seem like a considerable amount of processing, too. Um, I think it's going to be the way to go, though. I do. I think... I think it's going to be the way to do it. Um, just so we don't eventually run out of zero page locations here. Um, I think we're good still using it 80. And actually, I'm not even sure, might not even need these. Um, let's see. Let's do. This is our only. This is our only WW equation so let's call WWR um, and we might not need index anymore. Am I going to need index anymore if I do it this way? No. Because index was the way I was thinking I would get around needing these pointers to move, but if they're all going to move, well, actually, maybe... No, maybe they don't need to move, maybe just the index can move, but they can be pointed to five different starting points. Yeah, let's do that. So we still have our index. We'll put we'll put the index at uh, let's see. Let's
put the index at 78. still need message P because that's going to move through M as we copy 64 byte blocks. Um, so we'll call WWR, that'll be the result of our equation. Um, 7A, result of WW equation. WW1 can be the pointer into the first argument of WW equation. And we'll have four of those then. Okay. So if x is 64 at this point, then ww will be c100 will be the beginning of it. Okay, yeah. So we need to init these pointers at the beginning. So let's do that in our init block here. Um, okay. Mode eight zero. Store that into WW. Did I say I still needed WP? WWP? No, I didn't. I don't think we need that anymore. So yeah, that just actually that just becomes WWR. That's right. I think WWR is just more more clear. All right. So we have the first one set up. WWR. Then the second one is going to be. 8 less than that one, and so that's going to start at OB, store that into WW, WW1 plus 1, F8, all right, so that's going to, here, let's do this, let's say, Message P is set up to start at 2000. WWR is set up to start at C100. Here we're starting WW1 at OBF8, so that's 8 less than WWR. Then So that's that's WW1, that's WWR. This one's WW2, WW3, and WW4. So we just gotta convert between those two things, between those two equations. So load A with well let's see, up here, these are all gonna to start with B, so let's do that. Two, three, four. So then the second one is 56 less. What's 56 less than uh, 256? That's 200. So what's um, what's 200 in hex? I don't know off the top of my head. Let's find out. C8. Okay. C8. 
store that into WW2. So WW2 is going to start at 0BC8. And then WW3 is 4 back from that. And so that's easy enough. That's going to be C4. Store that into WW3. Mix that one OBC4. And then C0. Store that into WW4. Okay. So those are our four or our five pointers which we'll be indexing on and we're not going to start indexing on them until we until our index our index starts at 64. Yeah, our index starts at 64. So when with the index added, that puts this one at C100, this one at C04, C08 and so on up to C Four zero up here. All right, I think this is going to make sense. Like I said this is the this is the sketchiest part, but um, so this then becomes WWR, WW one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we get here then. We've stored our index, and then we want to copy four bytes, or I guess I don't know what I just deleted, but um, copy four bytes from WW1, comma X. Am I still throwing? Am I still off? <laughs> ah. Okay, I think maybe I just had an epiphany. Um, better way to do this with self-modifying code is probably what I should have done from the start. Um, This is being more of a pain than I thought it was going to be, that's for sure. Um, are going to have to be oh, I don't like that. I don't like the idea that they have to be that five different pointers all have to be incremented as we go through. Um, but it may just be the may just be the way it is. I don't know. Um liable to do that and then realize afterwards it was an easier way, but um, I don't want to spend hours just thinking about it here. Um, let's think about this a different way. What if we had a different copy routine? What if we weren't stuck with this copy routine? What if we had a different one that was just for this? so that we could pass um, yeah what if we had a routine that we could pass it
if we could pass it our pointer and x that's already three bytes And it would just automatically copy, let's say, four bytes from the location pointed to by that combination into temp2. Let's say it just automatically did that, copied it to temp2. Well, I guess that would work. Um, let's look at how that could work. Let's look at F copy MZ, which is a very short function. So let's see if we can write another one. Well, let's call ours FWW copy, or let's FWW, F copy WW. Let's keep it, keep things consistent. Copy four bytes from main RAM to zero page. Okay, and the source address, how do we want to do this? The source address Yeah, that's the thing. We're going to be passing Wait a second. Yeah. We could put the source address in copy source. What am I missing? All of a sudden it seems like this is easy and I'm not sure. I'm missing something. I'm gonna it's gonna hit me in a second here. Okay. Yeah, we we can't pass the index or we can't pass the number of bytes in Y because we need to pass the index in Y. The WW index in Y. That's got to be indexed down here. So we're not using A for anything at this point. So we can load A with 4 store that into count <clears throat> we don't want to do that okay so this then is going to load a from copy source indexed by y and we have to use y even though we've been talking about using x as the index we have to use y because of the indirect indexed addressing store that into 0, 0 indexed by x in 0 page. Increment x, increment y, decrement count. Seems like that should work. 
Um, I feel like I'm missing something that I'm, that's going to hit me when I go back to here. But <coughs> so to use that, then let's go over, get the get the docks for that instead of that one. To use that, then we have to put our source address in copy source. So we have to copy the address of WW1 to copy source. Okay, well that's not the end of the world. Um, although, there might be an even better way to do that. Um, yeah. do it this way. Zero page pointer to source address is an A. Come back here. Instead of using copy source, we'll call this zero zero. We can't, before we before we set the count then, by using, before we use A to set the count, we need to store A into F copy WW plus, let's see, or actually let's, let's put a, let's, this is the way I was doing it, wasn't I? Into here plus one. So what that's going to do is it's going to say, okay, our pointer, like let's say we're copying, let's say we're doing WW1. It's going to, we're going to want to put the, we're going to put the, we're going to want to put the address of WW1, which is 7C in A, so that when it comes here, it stores that right here. So if that's whatever it was just then, 7C, it's going to stick 7C in here and do the thing that it does. I think that, I think that's what we want. Okay. So, to copy four bytes from WW1, let's, we want to load A with WW1 itself, the number of, the, the, the address of WW1, not the value it's holding. We want to load X with temp1, let's say, might as well start with 1, and we're passing the WW index in Y. So we need to load Y from WW index. Okay. Because we're gonna we're gonna keep this this X up here is our index through this block. And so we're gonna keep clobbering it every time we call these routines. So we've got to keep that stored in WW index so we can get it back anytime we need it. So that's why I stored it. That's 64. That's where we start out after we copy those first 64 bytes and then jump to 17 F copy WW. Alright. That just copied that just copied four bytes from WWX to temp1. Alright. Now we need to do F4 on temp1. So let's remind ourselves how we do that. Um, X on the value pointed to by copy source. So we have to set copy source, I guess. Um, that doesn't even seem right. Is that how I do it? Oh, 
Yeah. Well, shoot. Now I got a problem because F4. F4 might have to change. I, I wrote F4 assuming it would need to copy the value out of main memory somewhere into temp1. But. an hour in here that says I've been very productive. Um, so F4 assumes that we haven't copied the thing yet. So did we need to... The problem is F4 assumes that copy source points to the location of the thing. And the problem is the thing moves. So to let F4 work that way, we would have to set copy source. Maybe that's going to be the best way to do it. Maybe... Hmm. We have our index, and we have our WW1 pointer. If we just put the WW1 pointer in copy source, add the index to it, maybe that's the thing to do. I have a, a mistake right here. Um, yeah. All right. Let's do that. Let's put... Get rid of this. We may not end up needing that thing, but we'll we'll have it if we need it. So, what did I say? F four does. Oh, that's right. X on the value pointed to by copy source puts the result into F four res. Okay, which is somewhere in zero page. So. So we're working on F. We're working on WW1. Okay, we can still we can still use these pointers. Um, so all that did was just copy the address of WW1 into copy source, and then F4. Or no, sorry. But before we do that, we've got to add x. We've got to add our index to WW1. Yeah. That's right. So how do I want to do that? The index is never going to be more than 256. So... Let's back up a step. Let's back up to right here. And then let's back up, take this down here. Okay. So we set the high byte of copy source equal to the high byte of WW1, which typically is going to be either, it's either going to be 0B or 0C. So we set that in copy source. Then we load a, well, let's see, now this has got to be, let's move that all the way up here. Okay. Get it out of the way. All right. Then we need to load a with WW1, clear carry, add with carry, WW index, store that into copy source, 
branch if not equal, or let's see, no, branch if carry clear, head, otherwise increment, copy source, and then there's our plus. Okay, so what we're doing here, no, and then this would be copy source plus one if, we, if, it need, if it's needed. Okay, so what we're doing here is copying the high byte of WW1 to the high byte of copy source. Then we load A with the low byte of WW1, add the index to it, add our WW index to it, store that into the low byte of copy source, and then increment the high byte of copy source if that rolled over. All right, and then copy source is set up, and we can jump to subroutine F4. Okay, um, this has a zone, so it needs a ending thing. All right, so to test this, what do we want to do to test it? We want to put something at 2000 that will then have F4 called on it and the result put at F4 res. That's what, that's what's going to that's what we hope ends up happening here. Um, although, well, let's see. Yeah, that's what's that's what we've got so far. We're going to copy something from WW1, which, well, let's just we set that we set WW1 to. BF8. Okay. BF8. Okay. And the first thing we did was copied. We got to test that too. The first thing we did was copied 60 byte or 64 bytes from 2000 to C100, and then we did F. We'll do F4 on the four values, whatever they are at. At, um, at BF8. All right. To do that, let's um, let's see if we got any problem. WWP. Okay, WWR, yeah, C, C hundred, okay. I might have to draw this stuff out to really get a good handle on it, what's going on here, but um, I think it's making sense so far. All right, load it up. All right, we need some stuff at 2,000. So let's put some stuff. Um, okay, there's some stuff there. Um, We want, let's see, it's going to copy, what did I say? It's going to copy the first 64 bytes, and there's 16 in a row here, so let's fill in at 2030. Um, So we got some stuff in there. Um, it should copy the first 64 bytes, which is the first four rows there, into the first 64 bytes at C100. And then it should do 
Um, and what did I say it should do? It should do um, F4 on these four, which at that point should be at BF8. And is that right? No, that's not right. BF8 indexed by 64 should be pointing at these and so it should do F4 on those and put the results into um, F4 res. Okay. Let's see if it does anything like that. Okay, nothing at C100. <laughs> um, did I, wait a second, did I even we're not even, I'm not even calling prep www yet, dummy. There's an it. So. Did we call it? Yeah, we call an it. Okay. Call prep www. Nothing at C hundred. Um, something I probably ought to consider is in the init step here. Store that into FF zero zero to set up the bank. Every once in a while, I'll get caught. I'll get caught on that. That. I didn't. Um, I didn't set the right bank, and so I'm not actually looking at the right memory. No, nope, still didn't copy anything there. All right, what's going on? We call in it. We add some stuff here. We jump to subroutine prep ww. So, what's going wrong? Well, let's look at the values here. Copy source and copy dest are at 50 and 52. And they have bizarre values in them. C38 might be correct, but 7B, 7A definitely isn't correct. So what's going on there? Probably Message P, where's message P at? Ah, that's why. Because I'm not getting the po I'm not getting the values from message P, I'm getting the actual address. That's not a good thing. It gets a little confusing because sometimes we're passing zero page locations of pointers to routines, and other times we're passing or working with the actual values of the pointers. Um, definitely a little confusing. But I think it's kind of necessary. Just because of the way the indexing works, we don't always get to do it the way we'd like to do it. Still nothing there. So let's see what we got at our pointers now. Still the same thing. 7B, 7A. Did I not save something? Or did I not edit it correctly? source, copy destination, copy source is at 50, copy destination at, okay, 
So... Where's message P at? Message P is at 76. Okay, that's correct. Store that in copy source. Let's break right here. Uh, we're clobbering it later on here, so I want to see what's going on here. Okay, copy source is correct, but copy destination for some reason is getting, um, must have the same mistake there, somehow. Yeah, I'm getting, yeah, I was loading the, the, the address of the pointers instead of the pointer itself. Same, same basic problem. Now we're copying our stuff. Okay, we've got our first four, first four rows from 2000 being copied to C100. All right, so now take out this break so it can work on the next part of it. Still got that there. Now what is in F4 res? at C, or 6C. Okay. Um, to figure out what it should be, we should be taking this value right here. Okay. 0102, All right. Let's go down to F4 and see what it does. All right. 01020304, that's, there's 01, there's 2, there's 3, there's 4. All right. This is going to be, um, <laughs> Rotate that thing 17 times to the right. <laughs> well, let's do it. Let's do it this way. Um, let's take out the spaces. Okay, 17 times to the right is the same thing as what did we do down here? Or, or I'm rotating 17 left. I must have changed it there and not changed it up above. Let's check and be sure. F4. Rotate right 17. Hmm. I might have a mistake there then. Because right 17 would be left 15. Well, we're not going to change that right now. I'll, I'll look that up in the, in the spec later. But um, for right now, I just want to see if it worked correctly the way it's supposed to be working. So... We're rotating left 17 times. That means we take 17 bits off the off the left end, move them around to the right end. So there's 4, 8, 16, 17. I believe that's correct. Yeah. All right. I've rotated it 17 times. Um, now hold on. Gotta undo that. We're gonna need three copies of it because we gotta do it three times. So this one, the first one, we're gonna rotate it left 17 times, which means 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Chop those off. 9, 10, 11, 12, 3, yeah. Chop those off, rotate them around to the left. The next one, we're rotating left 13 times. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 
and the next one we're rotating or what are we doing to the last one shifting it right ten times so this time we're just adding ten zeros on the left because it's not rotating it's just chopping ten off the right end All right. now if we exclusive over all these together we get zero one zero 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 one one zero zero one one zero one zero 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 one one zero 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 one zero one zero one zero zero one zero zero now let's break this back up so I can read it and that's going to be four six six eight uh, C two and A four. So is that anything like what we have here? No. Okay. It's similar. Four one E two C zero two one. I mean, I, I could have made a mistake here in my rotating stuff, so I'll have to look at that. But um, I did. I went through this pretty quick. But um, that's not quite, other than the four on the left end, that's not quite uh, what we're looking for. So I'll have to look at that. Um, but we're over an hour here, so I'm going to take a break. And uh, we'll come back next time. We'll keep working on these routines. Um, one thing about it, once we get this working for one of these, um, Once we get this working for one of these, it'll be quite a bit simpler to do the other ones. For one thing, two of these don't have a function to do on them. You just add them. So that'll be quite a bit easier. So, like I said, I, I, I felt like this was going to be the hardest part because this is the part where you're, you're kind of, you have a, you have a shifting window through this space, through this one block of memory. You have a ship, you have shifting pointers through it. And so I figured this was going to be the toughest part. And then, this may still not be the best way to do it. I may think of a better way to do it. One thing about it, this only has to get done once on each 64-byte block of memory. Now, it does get done 48 times on that 64-byte block of memory, but that's still only 48 times per block, whereas you get down to these things, these get done 64 times on each block. Um, and they're a little more involved. So, um, if I do end up deciding to have five shifting pointers, it, it may not be as bad a deal as I thought. So, um, something just killed my something just killed my camera. So, I guess this is a good time to stop. And I'll hope to see you next time. And thanks for watching.